Roy Hibbert was not a bad basketball player. He was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. A fate that many players in this era have fell to. Hello everybody, my name is Connor Kratz, aka Coach of the Goat, and today we're going to talk about the unfortunate downfall of Roy Hibbert. Roy Hibbert spent four years with the Georgetown Hoyas, proving himself as a reliable defensive threat and a guy who could just get it done on the defensive end. Hibbert was not the best rebounder, nor was he the best on the offensive end. However, the fact that he was so good on the defensive end convinced the Toronto Raptors to draft him with a 17th overall pick. However, shortly after, he would be traded to the Indiana Pacers for Jermaine O'Neal. In his first year, Hibbert spent time behind Jeff Foster and Rasho Nedarovic and didn't get that much shine, only playing around 14 minutes a game and putting up around 7 points, 3 rebounds, and nearly a block a game. Roy Hibbert wouldn't be given that much shine in his first year. However, in his second year, he would become the full-time starter and show signs of the defensive beast that he would eventually become. In his second season, Hibbert would average 12 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 blocks. Although he wasn't that efficient from the field, the Pacers didn't really need him to be as they still had Danny Granger on the roster, who was their main offensive threat. His third year in the league would be his best season yet, putting up 13 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks a game, while being the best defensive player on the floor for the Pacers and improving just a little bit on the offensive end as Granger was starting to slow down. Hibbert's third season in the league would also be his first playoff appearance, where he would play just okay. His points were down, but his rebounds and blocks would stay relatively the same, and the Pacers would get knocked out in the first round. Before we continue on to Hibbert's fourth year in the league, I want to talk about where the NBA was at the time. From 2000 to 2010, the NBA had jumped from just shooting 15 threes a game to 23. The normal jump throughout the 80s, 90s, and 2000s was around four to five more threes every decade. So the fact that it jumped up eight more attempts a game was drastic at the time. And the NBA was still sort of adjusting to this new era of basketball. Basketball teams were starting to become more positionless as players such as LeBron James were able to play the one through four and players such as Chris Bosh weren't just relegated to playing center but they could play power forward and possibly even small forward if they were mobile enough. This resulted in more efficient and more effective offenses, AKA the Miami Heat, AKA the San Antonio Spurs. This also overall just resulted in more shots on the offensive end and more five out offenses, which we'll get to later. Hibbert's fourth year in the league would be his best year. It would be his first all-star appearance, and he would average 13 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 2 blocks, and was arguably one of the best defenders in the league. Hibbert also saw small improvements on the offensive end, as he and David West were the two second-leading scorers on the team. However, the playoffs is where Hibbert would really make a name for himself. In just 11 playoff games while only playing 30 minutes a game, Hibbert would average 12 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game. Although some may consider Roy Hibbert's fourth year in the league his best year, I think his fifth year in the league was the cherry on top. In the regular season, Hibbert's scoring did go down from the year before. However, his blocks were up and his rebounds stayed the same, so he was still elite averaging 12 points per game, 8 rebounds, and 2.5 and blocks. But his regular season wasn't the reason that this season was so great. It was the postseason that made this year so special. Hibbert would get more minutes in the 2013 playoffs and would have the opportunity to play more games as the Pacers would make the Eastern Conference Finals. Overall, in 19 games of action, Hibbert averaged 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 2 blocks a game throughout the playoffs. He looked like legitimately the best center in the league at the time. And yes, I understand that in this time period in the 2010s, 
big men were kind of in a weird period. There weren't really a lot of elite big men in the NBA, but these are still elite numbers. I mean, in the Eastern Conference Finals, up against the prime time Miami Heat. This is 2013 LeBron. This is the 2013 Heat that would go on to win the NBA Finals. Hibbert averaged 22 and 10 against the LeBron led Heat. That's insane. You see, after 2013, though, the NBA was starting to transition into more of a five out perimeter oriented game. And for a guy like Roy Hibbert, that's going to cause some issues. You see, throughout Roy Hibbert's entire career, he was never an elite rebounder, nor was he really that elite of an overall defender. Yes, in the paint, he was phenomenal. His shot blocking ability was crazy. His reach was insane. I mean, he was seven foot two and his wingspan was so long. But Anywhere outside of the paint, or hell, I'd go even further and say anywhere outside of the restricted area, Roy Hibbert was very limited on the defensive end. And in 2014, that would get exposed. In the 2014 playoffs, the Indiana Pacers would face off against the Atlanta Hawks in the first round. The Indiana Pacers would end up winning the series in six games. Woohoo! Go Indiana! However, Roy Hibbert would get exposed. You see, the Atlanta Hawks were running an offense called Five Out. If you don't know what Five Out is, it's where every player on the offense, so the five players that are on offense, spread out across the perimeter. You have one guy at the top of the key, two on the wings, and two in the corner. And the Hawks had this guy by the name of Perro Antic. Now, if you guys know anything about Perro Antic, you know he can shoot the ball a little bit. So, what this caused was Roy Hibbert was stretched outside of his comfort zone. He wasn't able to just sit in the paint and block shots. He had to spread out to the perimeter. And this (laughs) did not go well. Through the first five games of the 2014 postseason, Roy Hibbert posted the lowest playoff rating for an all-star that year in the playoffs at .85. He was 142nd out of 147 eligible players. Roy Hibbert only averaged four points per game in that five-game stretch, 33% from the field, and had a game in which he got benched after the first 12 minutes because he didn't get a single point or record a single rebound. To put this in perspective, Roy Hibbert was an all-star in 2014. The next lowest all-star in that list was Dirk Nowitzki at an 11.31 playoff rate. Roy Hibbert was atrocious in these playoffs. This would start the downward trend of Roy Hibbert's career. And in the next season, he would get traded to the Los Angeles Lakers for pretty much nothing. A second round pick. Roy Hibbert's downfall was so fast and tragic that it's hard to pinpoint exactly where the downfall started. However, if I had to pinpoint the exact time where it did, it would be in those 2014 playoffs, and it would be in those first five games. The Pacers just realized that Roy Hibbert's play style was not evolving with the times, and if he couldn't evolve, he would be left behind. You see, this is not a story of a bad NBA player. This is not a story of a guy who just suddenly was horrible. It's a story of a guy who had a limited play style. It was a story of a guy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. My name's Coach of the Goat. If you guys enjoyed today's video, it'd be much appreciated if you could drop a like. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. And God bless.